Hi folks, you join me back in the workshop for the third week and um, just uh, got the neck and today what I'm going to be doing is fitting the neck or offering the neck up to the body. Now this is a little bit tight. They need to be tight but they don't want to be quite as tight as this is. Um, it should fit in there snugly but um, Borrowing one of Dad's lovely ancient chisels, um, although he's got a, a whole uh, brand new set. I just thought it looked quite nice to use the old chisels, plus the fact this is uh, Sheffield steel and it's very sharp. No, I didn't do that with the chisel. I didn't do it opening the neck package either. No, much more mundane than that. I did it sharpening a dinner knife, so there we are. Anyway, just going to let out this... Um, neck pocket a little bit. I'm just doing a little bit of work just to, to gently chisel away at the lower inside of this pocket. I'll try to get a better angle for you. As you can see I'm just taking it back past the red primer here and trying to make sure that we keep that bevel in place and coming out to the edge right the way out to the edge just to only taking little tiny bits off at a time and then all the time offering the neck back up to it and checking the fit still very very tight it does go in but it is very tight and also it's chipped the paint at the top there so I've got a bit of colouring covering up to do there um, so yes everything in little tiny increments just to just so that we don't take off too much you need to get right out to the edge in fact I need to go in from the other angle just to nib off that inside edge and the thing is what's happened here is it's just that we've built up some layers of paint and this neck might have been fractionally, fractionally bigger than the original neck on this. So just out of interest I've done the top lip already on the inside and exposed some of that. So just really exposing that side as much as I can as well. I'm just going to get in there with a little bit of sandpaper as well. Just to smooth it off. And again, just a trifle. Oh, that's probably snug now. By the time we get some more paint in there, I'm probably going to have to rub it back. Obviously, you don't see the paint once the neck's in. I need a bit of filler in here, I think just before we put the, uh, the colour on it. The next job is going to be to get these um, ferrules out of the, the headstock. Um, I've already started with one and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I've just uh, laid the neck over my two sanding sponges and put a, a piece of cloth over that just to protect the neck. And I've got a piece of bar and I'm just gently knocking them through using my elbow to steady the workpiece and then little gentle taps and there we go next one out only four more to go so I'll do one more for you and then I'll get the rest done away from the camera to check it's coming out yep yeah. It's coming loose. There's number three. Leaving these 10 mil holes. Right, well they're all out, as you can see. So we'll um we'll get on, we'll offer up the uh, the replacement tuning pegs just to see that they fit. Um, and also, um, oh yes, forgot to show you this, 
later video I'll show you how I did this it's just a uh, a logo from this project just on the back of the the neck uh, I'm debating at the moment until I get the neck plate which is on order um, whether or not I need to fill these the chances are I probably will need to dowel I've um, got some hardwood dowels um, and I may need to dowel this anyway uh, but for now we'll just have a quick check and see if the the locking tuners fit so I'll get one of these out it should do because they're 10 mil and these look like they're 10 mil um, sockets I'm not even going to measure I'm that confident I'm just going to put it in hey there we go so looks to me like these are going to be an easy little fit yep they're going to be fine so we know that the locking tuners are going to fit I've taken that out again because we know that they're all going to fit uh, I'm not going to worry about repairing this bit of damage that we saw in the uh, unboxing video because to be fair it doesn't get seen none of that will get seen um, as I say I may need to fill these in but we'll wait and see until you've got the neck plate you really can't work out whether the holes are in the right place or not I didn't really want a pre-drilled um, neck because it's much better to only drill once but hey we'll fill it and drill it if we need to um, I may hang on to this nut because this is not plastic this is a bone nut believe it or not and I think the reason that somebody has not wanted this neck is they've basically they filed the um, the low E string the base E string slot way too deep um, so I'm guessing that it's fretting out on the first fret um, but there's a little trick which I can show you with this at a later stage. We can always replace this if need be. Um, the other thing we could do now that we've got the neck and the body is to fit the neck to the body loose um, and to set the position of the bridge. Uh, but I know that you're absolutely dying to find out the, the winning colour. So instead of fitting that, I'm going to put the first colour coat on today for you and um, then I'll rub back that colour coat as I fit the neck and we'll do that with, with the correct colour on the guitar. So stand by for the first spray in the colour that you've chosen. So, yes, I've been and got some paint mixed up and as somebody rightly pointed out in one of the previous videos, I should be... Uh, wearing a an aerosol mask or a, a, a mask so what's the color that won out let's find out shall we
That's right, it is of course the ever popular seafoam green and I've got a little story to tell you about that once I've hung this up. There we have her, drying out, first coat of seafoam green on there and the story behind this, wow, I had some real difficulty finding this colour um, because it's an American GM uh, Chevrolet colour from 1958 so I had a Ducco code and I also had a DuPont code but they were both uh, American codes and to try and get that here in the UK um, was very very difficult because I wanted to get the colour match exactly right and I think you'll be able to tell that this, uh, hopefully you'll be able to tell in this light that this is a genuine seafoam green um, I had to have it specially mixed um, and I went to a local company and what I'll do is I'll put the mix and all of the details in here uh, but if you want to get this basically if you go to um, the company that I give you the link for the, the code is XP60 number one seafoam green GM in America um, and boy is it hard to get hold of so I've had anyway that's, that's I've used half of the first can and as I always say, two, three. This will take six coats of colour before I'm happy with it. And then at least three coats of gloss once it's been levelled. And again, I will rub down between each coat. Although, as you can see, this paint is a lovely paint because it's finishing really quite nice. It's got a bit of an orange peel effect on it. Each of these coats will be rubbed back um, to get them nice and level. I've got a bit of work to do around the neck. I'm going to mask that off now because I don't want any more paint in there. I also need to just uh, level off a bit of filler that I needed to put in um, while trying to fit the neck. But I think you can see she's going to look pretty marvellous, folks. So there she is. The Seafoam Green Strap Project. Hope you've enjoyed this little episode and tune in soon for the, for the next bit of uh, putting the whole thing together. In the meantime, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, enjoy, take care and wishing you all lots of great rocking.